Goes Hello. by the na name of Ben Flair. Welcome. Hey, Manny. How are you? Hi, everyone. How you going? <laughs> We're doing good. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad you're here. We can uh, get more juice on some of your fellow riders, <laughs> including the Mike Stewart. Give me your thoughts on Stewart. Oh, I love Stewart. Um, that guy right there, that's the reason why I bodyboard. Yeah. Um, when I was 13, 12 years old, I saw him on the news in Australia just ripping at Pipeline. And yeah, um, yeah, he's the godfather of it all. No, he's been around from day number one, and he's pretty much... He's bodyboarding. Yeah, completely. I, you yep. know what? I asked him a question. I'm like, what are you going to do after bodyboarding? What do you say? Die. Because <laughs> he's bodyboarding for life. So shout out to Stuart. So yeah, give yeah. us an update yeah. on your experience so far here in Gran Canaria this year. Yeah, Gran County. Is, this place is amazing. It's uh, like bodyboarders heaven. You know, you've got slabs just everywhere. And um, the place is just full of bodyboarders. And the guys rip here. Like the local talent so high. Yeah. Which is going to make a really interesting event, actually, because you're going to get these um, local guys coming into the top 24 yep. um, through the trials, and they're going to be pushing the limits and surfing really well. You know, they, they go big. These guys go big, yeah. and they don't really care about their personal safety too much. <laughs> exactly. Well, what are they going to put on the line, including yourself, out here at this wave, Fronton? Um, I think, well, the main things that everyone's going to be going for is just big airs. I mean, it's a perfect kind of aerial wave, and especially this size. Uh, you take off on a kind of bowl and it just goes straight into another bowl. So you've got kind of two waves power going into one, which means you can come straight off the bottom and just give it everything and do as big airs as what you possibly can. Yeah. All right. You have a uh, you have a heat coming up in heat number seven, and right now we're in heat number four up and riding. This is Diego Cabrera, local rider here wow. from the Canary Islands, holding onto that rail through That's the barrel, yeah. but cannot make it through. So. Yeah, Diego's a really good competitor. He's one of those guys that he can go either way. He can get, like, perfect tents in his heat, or he might not get much at all. He's just a really, really kind of explosive bodyboarder. And he's actually from the islands as well, and a pretty uh, popular kind of guy here. Well, he's uh, definitely somebody to be reckoned with because he's, I mean, he oh, completely. Pro probably puts more time on the reefs here on Gran Canaria mm -hmm. than, than most of the riders coming to visit. So he's definitely one to be reckoned with. Uh, also, we have Jeff Hubbard in the red jersey, yeah. Castell and Trudeau in yellow, and Jason Finlay in the blue jersey. Definitely yep. a stacked heat. Yeah, this heat's really tough, actually. I mean, we've got Jeff Hubbard out there, and he's, um, he's you know, in world title contention. There's four guys left, and, you know, I'd have to say, like, it, these guys, all these four guys that are in contention are just, like, really, really amazing bodyboarders. And um, Jeff's one of those guys He's actually, in the past year, I'd put him in my, you know, number one position for for being the most talented guy in bodyboarding. And, um, you know, these kind of waves are pretty well suited to him as well. Like, he loves big airs, and, you know, he's not afraid to give 100% of his speed into the section and go for 720s and all kinds of ridiculous stuff. But Jared's another guy as well. I mean, like, Jar Jared is, like, one of those guys who's just so explosive, gives it 110%, and we saw that in that last heat with that air reverse. That came out of nowhere. It was coming down to the last few minutes of the heat. But first, let's take a look. Jeff Hubbard up and right. His hair's still dry. Yeah, oh, big air roll spin right that there. Nice. Now his hair's a little wet. Yeah. And a great start right there for Jeff Hubbard. Yeah, yeah. So we have Jeff Hubbard, Guillermo Tamega, mm -hmm. Ryan Hardy, mm -hmm. and the kid who's coming in really quick at the last few he, uh, events on the tour, Pierre Louis Costa. Yeah, yeah. Very stacked. Makes it to the final. It's locked in. Is that for real? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's tough. Yeah. That's really tough because he's such a good competitor and he's so consistent and. If I was going to bet on a guy in these conditions, I probably would be betting on him. But, you know, like, out of all those guys, I really do hope that any one of them wins. Like, personally, like, they're yeah. all really good blokes, and they're all, like, such high talent level that, you know, if they win, like, you're going to be stoked for them. It's not like one of those guys that wins a comp or something like that, and you're like, well, he kind of didn't deserve to win. Like, he's not that good. But all those guys, <laughs> you know, they're just, like, really good, and they all absolutely rip. Oh, yeah. look at this ripper. Jared Houston, hey, he's, like, out of control, that guy, isn't he? Yeah, so his air reverse was like just out of the blue. I mean, we, we didn't, he, he actually started building as the heat went on and he ended up, he ended up with a nice air reverse mm -hmm. at the very end. And yeah. uh, he got some, he got some air between him and the way, him and the yeah. flat. So yeah. Yeah. solid wave. So let's take another look. And that's, uh, that's kind of what the judges love to see too. You know, they love to see a big fall out of a big air move. Yeah. Are we on? We also have seen some oh, big barrels too. Nice Diego. bank reverse right there from Diego sick. Cabrera. So Diego Cabrera, he uh, he's been following the tour and he actually did the ISA games that were whoa a little butt shot right there from uh, 
I guess that's for the ladies who are watching. <laughs> uh, the Red Look Bull the girls ladies, of ladies. just showed up. Yeah. <laughs> In the yellow jersey, that was Gastel and Trudo from Portugal. I believe he owes me 60 euros <laughs> from my buddy Nuno. So uh, I'm going to hunt him down before Gastel, he takes him. Gastel's a really good bodyboarder as well. He's probably uh, my favorite Portuguese rider. He can go big. He's got a really good style and really confident bodyboarder as well. So this heat is really tough. And here we got Jeff Hubbard. Jeff Hubbard sneaking Ooh. in under the pocket. It slides on the barrel before he even comes out, pulls off a roll, barrel roll, and comes out yeah, Jeff that was Hubbard. Good. That, yeah, that was it looks exactly like backdoor, doesn't it? I mean, that could that looked like that wave he wanted to pipe with, you know, like the long barrel and stuff like that. He's just he's at home here. We've seen a, a, a couple really deep backdoor sections come through. I think Jared Houston got a really clean one. Mm -hmm. Elliot Morales got a really clean one. So yeah. the waves are here. Uh, even though it's in the three to four foot range, th these are definitely contestable conditions yeah. for some of the top riders This in the is world. actually like... For me personally, this is my favorite kind of size to surf this place because it just opens up how many airs you can kind of do out there. When it's a bit bigger, you know, it gets such a solid ledge in it that you find it hard to actually get down and then get back up to the section. When it's this size, you can go straight down and straight up and that's kind of exactly the right kind of air ball that you want. You don't want something that's, you know, you're losing all your speed being on the bottom turn and you're going into a bigger section yeah. and you don't have the speed to get off the lip. Whereas this is perfect. It's kind of a big section going into a smaller section so you can just go into it with all that speed. But I think like... As the guys kind of warm up through the next couple of rounds, you know, the, if guys like Jeff get a good result here and Jared and guys like that, by the end of the third round when, you know, they're, they're guaranteed to make it through this series, that, um, that they're going to start opening up and doing some amazing stuff. You know, yeah. 720s, all kinds of wild stuff and going as big as what they can go just to show how amazing bodyboarding is. Uh, Jason Finlay's... Uh Video, there's a video clip. Let's go back Here really go. quick to the live action. Cast down through though. That was sucked that way. We Sorry, talked about <laughs> We talked about the priority system out there and one peak really being the dominant peak and everybody being close together. Jeff Hubbard up and riding. Yep. Oh, it's nice little section reverse air. Oh my. That was, that was nice. But the only flaw that I can find with that is that the judges actually have been um, not awarding crossover waves like that, that high. That was a per technically perfect reverse air. What happened was the wave went underneath him. So it was the kind of pullback his, um, his score potential of that wave. It's not, it's totally out of his hands. There's nothing he could have done. But this wave, El Fronton, tends to do that, where you get the wrapping wedge that kind of goes underneath the bottom of you. So we'll see. We'll see what the judges give him. That'll be pretty interesting to see the scores. We saw a couple, uh, a couple views of the head judge Craig talking to the riders. Yeah. Uh, is yeah. that when he was explaining? Yeah, he was crossover? Kind of explaining that because sometimes what you can get, you can get a section with like a 45 degree wave coming into the actual wave, and what you can do is just give it and do the biggest airs of all time. But what you're actually doing is going over the wedge and into the whole other kind of wave. So the judges have been pretty aware of that and they're um, not really awarding it full full potential, which yeah. I think is good. I think it's kind of the way they should kind of score yeah. that. Because uh, there is some guys out there in the world that say that's a make, when technically it's not really because you're not actually landing back on the wave that you're riding. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but though, but being able to pull off those big moves as mm -hmm. the wedge is coming by, landing in front this way, is mm -hmm. all, it's it's tough. It's really tough. Yeah. And it's, some, like I said, something that's out of your hands, like, um, it can just be the wave that kind of does that and you don't anticipate anything like that to happen and it just kind of drops out underneath you. Oh, yeah, see, this doesn't have that. That's just a nice, clean wall. And look at him, 100% of the speed. It's amazing. It's perfect. Technically, that is perfect, that rare reverse. He came full rotation on that reverse air 360, uh, air reverse spin. Great move right oh. there from Jared Houston in the last heat, solidified that first place spot. Amazing. And six points for Jared Houston. Yeah. Yeah, well, you actually break down that air reverse, and what he's kind of done is concentrate on getting the air yeah. first. Yep. Instead of just going into and rotating, he's concentrating on getting the air first, then rotating. That's why he got so much height, and that's why it was so good. But yeah, the conditions look like they're getting a little bit tougher with the kind of uh, northeasterly coming across, which does suck a little bit. It's going to make it a little bit harder. But what you're going to see is a lot of the competitors starting to go left a lot more, because what it'll actually do is create little chops for these guys to hit into. So, you, you know, you kind of... Imagine it almost being like a wedge, but it doesn't quite break. So you can utilize that to your advantage and kind of just get okay. air off those chops. Yep. Do you know what I mean? So that's probably what you'll see a lot more of. Um, the only disadvantage for that is that the tide's getting lower and typically you want a higher tide for those lefts. Yep. So you might also see a bit more carnage. And Oh, here we go. All right, Jason Finlay sneaks under that's the pocket nice. right here. This is his sneaks. first wave of the heat. Nice barrel roll up on the exit of that one. So finally, Jason Finlay on the scorecard. Yeah, yeah. These are 30-minute heats. Top two waves will be scored, mm -hmm. and uh, that was Jason's first scoring wave. So he's 
making his way back out into the water. Once again, welcome everybody. This is the IBA 2011 NMD Pride Stealth Frontone Pro brought to you by Grand Flavor. So, Yvonne. <laughs> All right, let's take another look at one of Jeff Hubbard's waves earlier in the heat. Yep. Okay, so that right there, that's technically called an air roll spin, uh, that aerial maneuver. And um, it's actually like, it's, it's a pretty hard maneuver to do. You know, like you're coming off the bottom and you're actually doing kind of two rotations in the air, which is the first roll into the spin and then you're landing. Um, it's kind of a fail safe kind of maneuver where you, um, I don't know what watching there, but... <laughs> uh, it's not the air roll spin that we're talking about. But anyway, um, yeah, because you actually are landing f facing back towards the beach. So it's a lot easier to kind of keep the momentum of the wave and keep going along. So in your your opinion, mm -hmm, my back opinion. flip, ARS, more difficult? Um, it's a complicated Which one because it's just personal preference. Nothing's right, nothing's wrong. Um, but for myself, like, I really love nice, clean, big back flips. Um, I think Pierre's probably the best guy doing them, Houston's really good at doing them, where you just kind of go straight back. There's no rotation involved, because what you're actually doing is like, it's actually really hard to get that rotation firstly, because your tendency is to kind of pivot and roll with the wave direction. What you're doing is going against that direction, and you're going straight back, and then you're also landing completely backwards, and you're having to spin it around. And what the problem is, is uh, with a bodyboard, you know, you've got your rocker at the nose. So if you're going fr straight on, it's easy. But if you're going backwards, there's no rocker on the tail, so it's really easy to tail dive. Yep. So that's a really big problem, especially when you've got chops and stuff like that. It makes it really tough. But yeah, that's what kind of makes the backflip so kind of appealing for me, I guess. So is that your favorite move? No, God, no. I love, <laughs> I love like our rotation airs, like forward airs and reverse airs. Look at this barrel. Oh, oh he got lit in the head. That wasn't pretty. Diego Cabrera Lippy. just a little bit too low as he pulled into that pocket and it looked like oh. he just got clipped. And next up, up and riding, Jeff Hubbard taking a look. No go for Jeff Hubbard. So, again, Jeff Hubbard in this heat going for that world title right now. He is cur currently sitting on top of the tour rankings. And Jeff Hubbard, he knows what's at stake. Mm -hmm. Diego Cabrera, a little too uh, low on that barrel. But yeah. you know what? He's, uh, yeah, he's Diego's got a funny guy. I mean, like, he's, got, he's a really charismatic guy. Really confident. Really kind of just going for it, you know, like a young guy, like, like he should be. And, um, yeah, with that barrel, like, he just went completely too low. I guess yeah. confidence kind of got to him. He thought he could get in any position that he wanted to and um, went too low and ended up getting lipped, which is a shame. Gas down through, taking a look, but it, it was Jason Finley <laughs> opting for this left and just uh, whipping Ooh. around slowly at 360 and barely making it around that section. Mm -hmm. uh, again, there's so much water hitting the shallow shelf that uh, the whitewash itself can knock you off your board. There's yeah. some powerful, powerful and stuff out there. If you see at the end of that wave there, like it's so shallow. Like the wa what the water actually does is falls off the edge of the reef. So if you're kind of caught right on the edge there, you, you get caught on it. You actually like hit the reef and you've got to roll over it. <laughs> I've Pretty seen scary. that before. Yeah. And that's probably one of the hardest things to do is probably getting out and coming in from, you mm -hmm. know, when it's big. Okay. Now we got the winner of the last heat downstairs with Shaggy. Shaggy, where you at? Shaggy. Hey guys, I'm uh, down here with Jared Houston. Jared, congratulations winning your first round heat. That's nice, isn't it? Sure, Shaggy. Thanks. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked, eh? Um, how hard is it out there? Um, it's getting progressively worse with the wind coming in, but uh, when I was out there, I was lucky enough to still get a few clean faces, and um, the little bit of west in the soil direction is making the right uh, cap in a little bit, so there's some fun air vols. So that's why he did that big air reverse on that right, huh? Yeah, no, that was just because, like, right before we went out, the riders had a meeting and the head judge, Craig Haddon, explained that um, he'd be looking for air reverse and air forwards out there for the bigger scores. And when that bowl lined up, I thought that uh, that was my opportunity to cash in. And you sure did cash in, hey? Ching, ching, round one, take that. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty stoked. Uh, it's always great to come, like, start off with a win so you feel a lot more relaxed. And um, so I'm just looking so forward to competing out there more. I'm sure you're looking forward to winning your round three heat though, hey? Yeah, that's the one I really want, yeah. Okay, well, congratulations. A little shout out to South Africa. Yeah, just uh, yeah, all my friends and family watching. Uh, Natasha, I'm sure she's watching as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for all the support. And see you guys in the next one. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jared. Well, Jared uh, Houston's sitting uh, pretty stoked right now. Yep. I mean, he's, he's feeling good out there. And uh, I'm sure his... Uh, his lovely lady is watching from Puerto Rico. Yep, she yep. can't be here, but uh, 
It's really early in the morning there, but I'm sure she's awake watching her, her, yeah. her baby. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, like I really respect Jared. I, yeah. I think he's one of the all-time bodyboarders at the moment and really pushing the limits too. And you know what? I think he's one of the cool, one of the coolest guys on the tour too. He's always there, uh, always offering a helping hand, and he's down to earth and mm -hmm. uh, really good to be around. So big yeah. shout out to Jared Houston. Yeah. For, uh, he's always happy too, isn't he? He's always he's laughing yeah. around and happy, and you know, it's good. It's good to see. I like hanging around with people like that. Oh, and there we got Jeff took his priority off that guy. Who was it? Gastel? I believe that was either Diego or Gastel. Yeah, but. Jeff Hubbard trying to put together a backflip, I believe, or aerial spin on the inside, but cannot pull it off. And here is Gaston Trudeau from Portugal. Ow. Yeah, that uh, the four-man priority system is really yes, great. I yes. mean, it's a pretty hard thing sometimes, and especially for the viewers, to keep up with. But what it actually does is stop a lot of the hassling. Here we got Diego. Whoa! -ho -ho -ho. That was really cool. Although he didn't handle it, that was a really cool thing that he tried to attempt that. That's, That's technically really hard to do. What you were just talking about explaining are these wind chops coming, being mm -hmm. formed from the wind, and uh, that exactly is what you were talking about. Yeah, that's completely right. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, look, going back to the four-man priority, it's, I mean, it's a great thing for a competitor because you don't, you don't have to worry about, you know, the other competitors and stuff like that hassling you off waves. Like, if you're out there the longest, you know that you got the next wave and there's no, you know, problems with anyone else, and everyone knows that. So you can use it to your advantage um, by just making sure that you select the best waves possible. All right, check this out. Diego's making his way out. The guys are waiting for the sets. We'll be right back right after this. Wow, look at that. Did anyone just see that wave? Oh my! I was just absolutely mesmerized watching the screen, looking at that thing. How amazing was that? <laughs> that was pretty. It was perfect. It was a, the perfect left hand barreling wave, and we unfortunately we're not going to tell you where it's at. Secret spot, dude. You, you're going to have to find it on your own. Uh, but mm -hmm. we know Jason Finlay has found it, and we'll yeah. just keep it at that. Mm -hmm. So out in the water, waiting patiently with 12 minutes and 30 seconds remaining, we have heat number four out in the water, leading the charge in red. Jeff Hubbard. On his tail, Diego Cabrera in second, Jason Finlay in third, and Gastel and Trudeau in the yellow jersey in fourth place. So how many, what do they need to get into that first and second place spot? Um, well, they've all got pretty weak second scores, you know. So um, Diego needs a 6.76 to put that into layman's terms for anyone out there. That's probably like a nice little tube with a rollout or a kind of ARS or backflip. Jason Finlay is sitting about the same, doesn't need much. Um, Gastel in Trudeau only needs, oh, he's on a 3.75 total. So he's really struggling and he needs some major points. Um, but let's talk more about Jeff. I mean, he's going into this heat, right? He needs pretty much, if he makes the final here, he wins the world tour. He's out in this heat right now. I haven't seen any sign of any stress right now. He's yeah. out there just competing. First wave gets a 5.75, which is one of his counting waves right now. And he's got another 6.75. Uh, the guy's, he's, he's a machine. Let's like, he is actually kind of like a machine. Like, you talk to him and he's so <laughs> focused. And he's like, yes, yes. No, no, no. I am Jeff Hubbard. <laughs> and he's just like so focused and so dedicated. Doesn't drink alcohol, doesn't do any drugs. Just like completely focused on what he does and his passion. And well, like, you see a guy like that and you think you're totally deserving of winning a world title. Oh, here we go. Blue. Wow, big one. Jason Finlay coming around the section. That big nice. invert right there and pulls it off. Well wow. done, buddy. Well done. So that's a pretty strong wave. That's a nice clean air. The judges will really like that. Um, I would say it could push him a little bit higher, which is pretty amazing, Pro possibly into second place. I I'm not a judge. I can't make the calls, but <laughs> if I was a judge, I'd probably get the score that he needed. This um, is the second time we've seen a rider pull off a maneuver and head over to the channel and readjust mm. because the fins, fins, no matter how tight they're on, if the whitewash or any part of the wave grabs hold of it correctly, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to rip it off. So well, yeah. fin tethers yeah. are crucial out there. Well, I, I use stealth fins, who Jason uses as well, and um, they're an amazing fin. Um, but it doesn't matter how great your fin is, you still might um, lose them, especially on big impacts. And look, look, at, look at that. like So that's an amazing air. Nice and slow, just nice, a lot of air. That orange slick really pops too, doesn't it, eh? Yeah, and I've noticed that a lot of riders are turning to more colorful slick skins as they're 
competing in bigger, heavier waves because yeah. you can drown yourself oh. in the big whitewash, but when you have bright colored boards, mm -hmm. the judges see that as yeah. you're doing big lip maneuvers Completely. and big air maneuvers. So yeah. we're going to see a lot more colored, yeah. colored boards. Oh. Like, oh, <laughs> Diego Cabrera in the white jersey just presses the eject button full flight Funny. and he's heading back out. So. So now we got Pierre, like we just saw, running down for his next heat. Um, you know, he's he's another guy in contention for the world title. Uh, you know, he, let's see. I'm pretty excited to see how he's going to go, how he takes the pressure and stuff like that. Because again, like it's amazing just how calculated Jeff is under this situation. Is it? You know, he's doing amazingly, isn't he? He's winning the heat right now. I have yeah. a I have a trick question for you. Okay. PLC, Amari, Jeff Hubbard, these guys are friends, really good friends. They've been traveling together, mm -hmm. but now they come down to the title showdown. Two of which, PLC and Jeff Hubbard, are going for the title. Yep. But they're still hanging out. As oh oh my, look at this. Jeff. Jeff, out of nowhere. That was really good. Great wave, still continuing off. Jeff Hubbard, hold, hold on, Jeff. doctor. Hold on. I'm not done with my question. I want to get your opinion Sorry, on this. Man. So Jeff Hubbard coming down to the wire of 10 minutes mm. remaining in this 30-minute heat. So great wave right there for Jeff Hubbard. Do you know what I really love? I really love competing against Jeff Hubbard. <laughs> you know there's no half ass heaves. You have to give it everything because Look he's at capable this. of anything. He was actually hitting the brakes in that pocket to stay in the pocket a little bit more and to be able to perfectly time mm -hmm. uh, exit with a roll. So Jeff Hubbard has eyes out in front of his board. I don't know what he was thinking, but he was able to pull off a nice barrel roll on the exit of a nice barrel and coming into the inside and pulling off another yeah. one. That was That's a big score. That was a big, a big I didn't score. Know, do you even see him take off? I didn't see him take off. He's like <laughs> a little angel just swooped in from behind the peak somewhere and got Pro shacked off his head. He probably did a dolphin takeoff underwater yeah. and pulled it off. Jeff yeah. Hubbard, solid wave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's your question, buddy? So my question is, PLC and Jeff Hubbard, they're going for the world title, but they're still hanging out together sleeping in the same building together and uh, i mean when do you when do you draw the line saying okay you're my competitor you're not my friend um it's pretty hard like i mean i too am really good friends with all these guys and you know i didn't do puerto rico and i saw them again like you know a couple of days ago and you, everyone is so close no like we're they're all like we're all like brothers like yep. you see them and you give them a big hug yep. and everyone's like so excited but it does make it really hard when you know that that person's potential potential potentially taking you know away your dreams of being a world champion exactly that person could rip all your dreams away from you <laughs> so it's, exactly. it's really hard and um you know like i don't know what i do personally is i just don't let it get to that stage i just don't stay with those people and you know you respect that you all need your own kind of space yeah yeah, yeah. so you answered it at the very last second right yeah, there but like i'll that. take it yeah. so yeah jeff hubbard he is uh facing off with plc who's coming up next but jeff hubbard he is in a good rhythm mm -hmm. this year yeah. to be world champion. Yeah. Let's go back and take another look. Pipeline was the first stop in the 2011 IBA World Tour, and this is where he came back from no man's land look at that and came yeah. out with two big high-scoring waves to yeah. take the win away from Thomas Rigby in the final of the Pipeline Pro. And then we saw him in Mexico. How good was that event? That was amazing. Like, just big waves. Guys Huge. going big and going as big as what they could. Look at this. And look at that. I mean, <laughs> that is bodyboarding right there. Big airs, big barrels, and that's what it's all about. And Jeff winning that, I mean, after Pipeline, it kind of like it looked like he was pretty much sure that he was going to win the whole way through, really. Yeah. And then, you know, Pierre came along. Yeah. Won that last event in Puerto Rico. And it's all back up in the air again. If Jeff had it done well in that Puerto Rico event, exactly. it would have all been over. Yeah, <laughs> and it's just exciting. That's the way the world tour is. Is that you got, you know, you got every single guy could be a world champion if luck goes their way and vision goes their way and focus goes their way. They could all be a world champion. And you know, it's this perfect example this year where you got Jeff who was off to such an amazing lead, and uh, and and Ryan as well. You know, with the winner box, and then you know all these things just change up, and it's still four guys going to the last event, and everyone's so close, and everyone's talented enough to take that. Yeah, I mean, there's four guys still up for grabs. Jeff Hubbard, PLC, Ryan Hardy, and Galeri Mitomega. These guys are, this is it, coming down to the wire. The showdown at Fronton, and it is going to be an amazing thing if the mm. swell comes in and the winds stay calm 
and we get a good direction from the swell, yeah. I, it's going to be an amazing, mm -hmm. amazing finale to the 2011 IBA World Tour. And this event in particular, yeah. the NMD Pride Stealth Frontone Pro brought to you by Grand Flavor is uh, – is the epitome of where bodyboarding competition is at right yeah, now. Yeah. Take a look at these guys right here. Coming up next. Yeah. That's uh, Pierre Louis in the red right there. You can see him down there. Rather good looking kid. Got an amazingly beautiful girl, Root. Yep. Uh, Mike Stewart, the godfather of bodyboarding. Yep. Genesis Reyes, who's, uh, you know, the biggest legend out here. Yes. That guy goes so goddamn hard. Like, like just pulls into closeouts for the sake of it, just for a bit of a laugh. <laughs> and who else is in there? Sorry, I didn't catch your last name. Uh, that, that coming up and making off that. Uh, I got you, didn't I? Yes, it was Guillermo Cobo. Guillermo and Cobo. Gu Guillermo is like an amazing competitor as well. In Portugal two years ago, he shocked me. He was doing the biggest reverse airs, biggest flips, and absolutely ripping. And I know he's more than capable of getting two tens out there today. So the next heat. Yeah, stacked as stacked. well. We're coming yeah. down to the last four minutes of this heat. Heat number four out in the water. Jeff Hubbard still leading the charge. Jason Finlay, Finlay coming fin up in Finlay. Finlay coming up into the second place spot. Diego Cabrera in third and Castel in through those. Can, we, can we just talk quickly about Jason Finlay? Like yes. he's kind of come from nowhere, hasn't he? Like I remember a few years ago there was a few like um you know saw him a little bit in the media and stuff like that and had a couple of surfaces with him down the south coast of New South Wales and. And here he is actually just uh, just looking at this wave. Oh, jeez, uh, what's <laughs> going on? We Live got, action, oh! Ho, ho. We got tech problems. Big reverse right there from Jason Finlay. Does not pull it off, though, but a good effort right there in the blue jersey from Australia. Jeff and Hubbard. Jeff. Nice turn, bottom oh, turn. Oh, my! Was sick. Well done, Big Jeffrey. Big air roll spin right there for Jeff Hubbard. Why does he make it look so flawless? Because he rips. I Let's mean, talk about... Who do you want to win the most? I can't. I come don't, on, want, come I don't on. want to put that uh, into the hat. but <laughs> It's I, hard, isn't it? Yes, it's, it's really very hard. hard. But you know what? I love to. I would love to see uh, PLC win his first title at, mm -hmm. at such a young age because uh, he's worked so hard. But I'm from America where Jeff Hubbard is from, oh. and I, oh. ha I have to go for the, the – the proud, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. national pride, yeah, yeah. Uh, and go for Jeff Hubbard. And, you know, he's got he's got a couple world titles under his belt, mm -hmm. and yeah. he can pull it off. So, yeah. you know what, I'm putting my – you know what, no, don't put me in that position ever again. <laughs> you yet. already did it, mate. <laughs> so, anyway, I, I, kind of, I personally don't really care who, which one of those guys win. I want them – I kind of wish they all could win, to be honest with you. Like, for every different reason, like Ryan, like – you set me up. I did. I, I completely totally got you. You totally just set me Thank up. Thank you. Thank just you. so you can give yeah. me your answer yeah. and just put me in and the And now I look really diplomatic and good. <laughs> and he kind of looks like a biased American. But hey, don't <laughs> worry about it. I'm not judging. I have no effect into the whole scheme of things. He doesn't. I'm just teasing everyone. <laughs> there. The judges actually, w what we're in right now is a little kind of uh, shipping container. And it's on top of a cliff looking out over El Fronton. And then, oh, I didn't see this. Did yes, we did. That was pretty tech, wasn't it? Yeah, that was Jason Finlay with a nice carving. Uh, he almost got some air off that, but it was just he was floating on top of that, yeah, that yeah, wave. Yeah. Uh, he didn't pull it off, but here's that another look at Jeff Hubbard's big that air roll amazing. spin. Look at that. Textbook air roll spin. And look at Jason, Jason. Bottom, uh, <laughs> duck diving and had to see that with his own yeah. two eyes in his face. But yeah. Jason's still looking good right now. It's yeah. second place with one minute, 30 seconds remaining. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look at uh, Jeff Hubbard with that last one. Got a 7.75 for that flip. I think it was a pretty much flawless flip. Um, yeah. Could have almost gone a little bit more than that, personally. Like, um, he landed back towards, facing towards the beach. Big section. Two to five maneuvers with the roll on the spin. Yeah. It was big. I'm just happy to see all this action. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty it? amazing. And uh, lucky for our viewers who are still sleeping, it's still, you know, early in the wee hours. Um, we do have our YouTube channel, IBA, YouTube.com, uh, IBA World Tour. And that's where you can watch your uh, heat by heat replays yeah. of the event. So mm -hmm. it's all going up on the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. That's where you're going to get your email notification when the latest and greatest video clips come out. Look at that big invert from Gastel in through the – not a huge wave, but you know what? It's coming down to the wire. He yeah. needs a 7.25, so he needs to get something. Yeah. Uh, but that wasn't what he wanted. I, I kind of – to be completely honest with you about Gastel is I feel like he hasn't had a break yet in a competition. Like you surf with him in any kind of free surf, and he surfs really well. And then you see him in competitions, and – you just feel like he's not getting the opportunities that he kind of deserves out of the guy of his level. 
And there, it's pretty sad to see. I hate seeing that because you, you really want that person to be able to, you know, surf as good as what they really do surf. Like, and, What um, do you think it is? Is it, is it a mental thing? Because he's obviously got the capabilities mm. of, of doing all the big moves, but there's somewhere along the line something happens. It has to be a mental thing. Oh, I'm going to go like a bit spiritual here and say you kind of manifest. Oh, that was unbelievable. <laughs> wow. Diego Cabrera under the horn pulls off a big backflip at the end sick. of that wave. And Sorry, Jason. That could be uh, Jason. Well, Diego was looking for a 5.51 for second place. Oh. Let's take another look of Diego Cabrera's wave if we can. But a 5.51 it was what Diego is looking for. You know what? Diego is another one of those guys who is waiting for that break. Yep. He's been having a tough time in these early rounds and always comes up on that bubble yeah, at yeah. the end of round three yeah. and comes up short. You saw him in uh, Confitel last year. Yeah, yes, last year. Yes, he, yes. he won Confitel, didn't he? Let's take another look, look at, at this. Look at that. Perfect little flip ball. Perfect backflip. Oh, in. my. Oh. And the, here's, what oh, you're look at that. here's what you're talking about. Looked possibly like digging, the, maneuver, didn't it? digging the tail, but he was able to yeah. pull it around. Yeah, yeah. So Diego yeah, Cabrera. I wonder what he got for that. He would have gotten up anyway. But uh, so what's going on next? He